Jason and Sherman, and we're chopping it up, the Summer of Ponce edition. What's up, Jay? It's the summer, and I love it. And I love the fact that we're having a virtual Summer of Ponce tournament presented by USA Taekwondo, of course. And on top of that, Sherm, hundreds of athletes competing for the chance to, to be a virtual champion, as well as what? An opportunity to see themselves on their pathway to being ranked number one in our official USA Taekwondo Pumse rankings, which are new. That's exciting. Right. right. Listen, the, the thing that we've said over and over these last few months is that real champions can adapt. Right. And they make the change, whatever change is necessary. And this is, this is I'm sure, unsettling because a lot of these Pumse athletes, from years of working tournaments and being in the holding area, we know that they like structure they like reg regimented they don't like upheaval they don't like a lot of unknown quantities but they've pivoted um into this visual virtual format man and i'm so proud of our athletes for being able to be uh, nimble enough to do whatever is necessary to show the highest level of pumse in our country so i'm looking forward to it bro yeah we have elite elite uh competitors all over the usa and Again, like you said before, their, their ability to adapt, their ability, as you said, to be flexible. What does that do? That just shows that we have world-class athletes in this program. And so we're, we're excited to, to watch them compete this summer. And on top of that, again, they're going to get opportunities to kind of see their way through the pathways, USA Taekwondo's new pathways to the Pumse national team, as well as the ranking system. So just, as I said before, it's just – a really exciting time. I mean, it's a difficult time with COVID-19, but new and great opportunities for our Pumse athletes. So Jay, I don't know if you can notice, but in my mind, I'm on the beach and I'm swatting at mosquitoes. Do you see me with this? Because I had to take myself mentally to the summer of Pumse. I don't want to be still in the summer of coronavirus. I want to be at the summer of Pumse. And so, I should have put on a little insect repellent, apparently, but I yeah, will you, the next time. I did put it on, so I won't have to swap. See, so that, see, that's why you're safe. That's why you're safe. Listen, can, can I start with the male under 30 athletes, black belts? Absolutely. Can I run down episode, that list? Episode one, we've got some heavy hitters, Sherm, so why don't yes. you tell us who it is? Listen, I, we're starting off with our male under 30 black belts. This is that division that is that it is thick, thick thick with top quality athletes. So number one, we have Kevin Jang. Then we have Justin Chin, Alexander Totora, Alex Lee, Casey Liu, Andrew Hurd, Ethan Sun, Jason Matsura, Kevin Liu, George Chin. We have Ji Wong Jung, Ryan Burnett, Brian Meager, Max McKenzie, Jason Dahlberg. We have Amil Dravid, Robert Miller, Jeremy Su, Isaac Finta, William Shin, Daniel Lee, and Ho Jun Park. And that, my friends, is 22 of the best male under 30 black belts in the, on the earth, on the whole yeah, wide that's world. Impressive. A lot of elite names there, you know, coming yep. off of the Grand Slams for Pumse, had an opportunity to watch a lot of those competitors compete. And when you say some of the highest quality of the athletes, you're dead right with it. I got to watch them compete at the highest level at our Grand Slams there at their center, National Center for Excellence. So it's been uh, fun to watch those guys. Hey, we also have in this first upcoming edition, the under 30 female black belt competition. Again, right. also very competitive, very high level. We know it's going to be tight because these guys, uh, I beg your pardon, these, these ladies always come with high level. They bring it. Let's, 
let's give you the names. It's Kelsey Ha, Dallas A.J. Munoz, Christy Park, Valerie Long, Camille McLaren, Christina Castillo, Leah Rosenwig, Kathleen Lynch, Tommy Cozart, Renee Zhao, Aaron Klingerman, Karen Real, Angela Tortoro, Caroline, Carolina, I beg your pardon, Solis, Elizabeth Zhao, and Ariana Lee. So that's 16 elite athletes competing here. That's actually the nice. prelims for these, for these athletes. So excited to see these athletes out there competing again for a chance to move to the next round here at the USA Taekwondo Summer of Pumse. Yes, it should be exciting action. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, buckle in your buckle yourself in your seats. You are in for quite a ride. Quite a Pumse ride. Quite a Pumse ride. I've got to get some bug spray, man. I've got to get some. Yes, you do. Yes, I'm you literally do. being assaulted here. This is this is driving me nuts. So good luck to the competitors. Good luck to our under 30 Let's male go. black belt competitors. Good luck to our under 30 female black belt competitors. Go hard. Give your, your best shot. And we look forward to seeing who makes it into the next round of yes. the USA Taekwondo Summer of Pumse. Summer of Pumse. <laughs>
for those at home, uh, we the judges are not hearing our commentary. We're doing this commentary separate from the judging. So if we make any frank comments, the judges will not hear these comments. Hello. And that's just on concluding his first boom say. And his score has come up at 7.17, a little lower than our previous competitor. Me. See how he racks up for take up eight. She duck. Carissa, can you speak to what, it, what the experience is like recording these videos and how it might be a little different than live competition? Absolutely. It is quite different. I mean, I'm glad that we have these opportunities to still compete. Um, it's definitely still an adrenaline rush needing to record, even though it's not entirely the same as being in an in-person event. Um, you know, with these recordings, you do have an opportunity to do it again if you need to. But, um, you know, as an athlete, you, I think all of us are perfectionists and want to get it just right, but that puts a certain amount of pressure on you as well. So it is similar in that respect. You definitely feel that rush when you are competing and doing these recordings, um, and we definitely want to get it right. Um, but you do have a little bit of that luxury of doing it again if needed, unlike in-person competitions. Come in. And Justin Chen finishes a second Pumse with a little bit of a higher score here at 7.30. That's his final Pumse score should be a bit higher now at 7.24. And here, noticing that there's three judges, that means every score counts. There's no dropping of the high or low. So keep that in mind when looking at these scores. Putting him in second place yeah. out of the two competitors. And next we have Alexander Toratora okay. from Team MCPP. Coached by coaches An, Lee, and Long Wen. Alex was a bronze and silver medalist at the 2019 National Championships and uh, enjoys golf in his spare time. Certainly a lot of parallels, I think, between golf and Kumse. You got to have that repetition, relaxed stroke, finding that right balance between power and tension. I have to say, I'm definitely admiring the space that he is competing in right now. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. All that glass. Very clean execution. I think you should see some good scores here. Sure. Right, his total score for his first boom say is 6.93. Pretty high presentation score, a little bit lower on the accuracy. Be. Yeah, then maybe there was a uh, something technical I'm missing there, but it appears the technical, sc technical scores were a little on the lower side, especially from that first yeah. judge. Looking pretty clean so far. Very interesting to see the power shine through via video, a bit different than watching in person. That's true. And I, as a coach, I know that we've all had to think about how our performance looks on video rather than just in person. That's uh, certain things that you have to emphasize. And very solid on this finish. Let's see how his second Kumsi score lines up. Bottle. Gene. Uh, much higher. Wow. Much higher. Final total score is 7.47. His accuracy score and presentation score bumped up quite a bit. So it, appears, 
7.2, yep. And it appears there was something in that first form that we didn't necessarily see that the judges honed in on. Must have given a major deduction because his score certainly did bounce back on that second Pumse. Here we are at the USA Taekwondo Summer of Pumse with Pan American gold medalist Alex Lee. Alex, thanks so much for spending a little time with us here and the chopping it up with Jason and Alex, if you will, today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how have you been doing in this uh, crazy time? Uh, I've been doing all right. Uh, fortunately, I've been healthy throughout the entire pandemic. And definitely, I've been staying more indoors, uh, trying to stay safe. And hopefully, everyone is staying safe as well. Yeah, no. And uh, you, you just got to do what you have to do. And I, I'm, that's what we're all trying to do during this time. Brings me to my next question. Coming off of a Pan American Games gold medal in Lima, Peru, where that was a big crowd, really big stadium. Um, so you have all that crowd really to pump you up you have all of that you know those distractions as well now mm -hmm. you come into this virtual competition where you're basically doing it um a prior ahead of time so what are the challenges and and what are the differences that to get yourself ready to compete in this virtual summer of Pumse competition mm -hmm. uh definitely it's a huge environment change uh like as you mentioned the staining was absolutely huge and so there's lots of background noise there's lots of people cheering and definitely the competitive pressure is insanely different uh right. coming from a huge stadium to my own home gym where i'm definitely a lot more comfortable but definitely trying to get into that competitive mode that competitive pressure and that like um kind of stress almost is definitely really different and so for sure, there is there there is like a different set of unique challenges that it comes to competing virtually uh, that that definitely aren't present when competing in like real life. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. <laughs> you know, from 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 a dojang to uh, to the Pan American Games to the World Championships, big difference obviously in the environments for sure, and the dynamics change as right. well. Um, so I'm gonna let me pivot to uh, what what USA Taekwondo has just rolled out. Mm -hmm. uh, a national ranking system along with the pathways printed right out there for the athletes to see for the Pumse team to make you the national team. You've had a chance to kind of wrap your mind around some of that. Uh, what's your thoughts? What's your feelings on the pathways? And of course, the opportunity to be ranked number one in the country uh, on the national Pumse ranking system. Yeah, so um, I actually just got a chance to look at it a few days ago, and I have to say I'm really, really excited. Uh, national rankings have been something that I personally have been looking forward, forward to for a long time for Pumze, and because I would always see like the sparring athletes and they would have, have the ranking systems, and I thought oh, that was super cool. And especially because Pumze is starting to move into kind of like a single elimination round, especially for the seniors and up. And so we would start to have, um, we would need the seedings that the rankings would provide. And so I right. thought that would be really exciting to see. And definitely the whole um, national pathway and the national team pathways is really, really cool as well. Because I, I was looking into it and I noticed that it was really, really important to stay consistent and right. continuously perform at a high level. And because that's the only way that we're going to be guaranteeing that we have like the best performing athlete representing us at the highest at the highest level of competition. And so I'm definitely really looking forward to that. Um, I think it's a really cool idea and I can't wait for it to kind of just play out in the next few years. Yeah, it's a great point. Consistent athletes doing performing at a high level turn out to be the best national team members and ultimately, hopefully a world championship gold oh. medalist for yourself and for Team USA. Alex, um, one, I'm going to say good luck in the under 30 male division. I'm sure you're going to have some success um, in this up and coming competition. For, uh, for us at USA Taekwondo, thank you for spending time. It is Alex Lee, the USA first ever gold medalist at the Pan American Games. Thanks so much, Alex, for taking time with us today. Thank you so much for your time as well. Now we are going to watch Alex Lee compete. Doing it. So yeah, having been there at the Pan Am Games as uh, the coach for Me. that group, uh, Alex really performed amazingly under pressure out there. First ever representation of Pumse at the Pan American Games and gold for the first medal for the United States in the entire game. So it's a lot of pressure on him and he was able to perform. Alex really known for a really clean, relaxed style with very little extraneous move movement. It's always a pleasure watching Alex because of all the cleanliness and the show. Oh, 
What was one thing that uh, you know surprised you about Alex during your time with him at Pan Am Championships? Hello. I think uh, I was just impressed with actually uh, his sure. leadership. I think uh, obviously all the team was from yeah. one school, the way the selection procedures worked out. Um, and I just was impressed with how he really anchored that team and kept them very grounded. And Alex's first boost hit comes up really high at 7.83. Solid first round. Okay. And it's interesting, huh? Like uh, normally at a live tournament, you would be adjusting here at this point in the day you would be watching how the judges are scoring but in this case really uh, we just have to put our best forward put forward on every single pumse and and um and then trust the judging after that so it is a little bit of a different psychology to the competition would you say carissa absolutely definitely between pumse between rounds you're definitely adjusting according to you know what the, the scores are showing but in this case you really need to trust your style and that's that confidence in every performance you can give. Like I said earlier, you know, it's fantastic that we have this opportunity to still be able to compete um, during this time and uh, competition rush, even though it's you know, hitting videos instead of going to a competition somewhere else. Hello. There's another solid performance by Alex Lee completes the sure. eight. Let's see how he Hello. finishes. Hello. Hello. And slightly lower on this one, but still very solid at 7.67. <clears throat> And his final Kumsi score finishes at 7.75. Now let's take a look at our standings. Alex Lee is on top, followed by Kevin Jang, Justin Chung, and Alexander Tortora. Chariu! Kenny! Next up, we've got Casey Liu from Us Taekwondo, coached by Master Justin Wong. Right, and this being the preliminary Chau. round, uh, half of, only half of the competitors will advance to the semifinal round. But in this competition, we needed to record all of the rounds. So I say that was also another fantastic opportunity for us to be able to do all of the Pumse. So for this group, they had to submit three rounds of videos, their preliminary semifinals and finals round. That was a really nice turning kick, really nice round kick. The kicking caliber very high here. Pedal. Finish. Very solid finish. Take it six. Chill. Chill. And he finishes with a 7.37 for his first Kumse. Chill. He can bump that score up with his second one. To beat. Yeah, and I would say the fact that we had to record both Kumse in one take really uh, changed the dynamic, ah! often, right? It's different than just recording one Pumse at a time because mm -hmm. the pressure was on a little bit more to get that run right. And you couldn't just uh, rely on fine tuning just one Pumse at a time. So especially when Kumgang right. is in the mix. But in this case, uh, these are two of the saber forms, I would say, uh, with a lot of front kicks, with that one round kick, uh, one pair of round kicks. So at least in this case, I think uh, people probably could let loose a little bit more and express their Pumse. Right, I would say take a six and take a eight seem to be a little more rhythm forms. Rhythm shines through a little bit more. Ah. Maybe kumgang, where you're focusing a little bit more on that stability. That's right. Puddle. All right, Kilu finishes Kini. his second pumse. Let's see how his scores Chill. end up and where he finishes. A bit higher at 7.5 for your second Kumse. A little bit of a bump up in both the Dr. presentation scores, finishing with a 7.43 overall. And still on top, we have Alex D. But you can see we have a tie here, Kevin Jang and Casey Liu. So that means that Kevin Jang's presentation score is probably higher, and that's why he's currently ranked second.
Next up, we have Andrew Hurd from CW Taekwondo Boston, also coached by Master Dan Trong. A teammate of ours in Boston. Yeah, Andrew has been in Boston for four years now, I believe. Five, five years, years, maybe? <laughs> five years, yeah. It's been definitely a pleasure watching him evolve and grow as a person and an athlete. For sure. Yeah, Andrew uh, earned a bronze medal at the World Cup last year with men's 18-30 uh, to 30 team. <sighs> also uh, earned uh, gold at the Pan Am Championships and freestyle individual. So he's a freestyle athlete as well, double threat. And clean first run. Slightly lower than the rest currently at 6.8. After team presentation scores tonight at 3.97. To me. She just. Ah! Andrew just graduated from uh, Northeastern. <laughs> He's one of the computer science after five years. Yep. And uh, enjoys video games and programming in his spare time. <laughs> Not uncommon hobbies. A little bit of a tilt there. <sighs> Hello. A solid finish on that last bar. And his second pose comes in at 6.57. Slightly lower accuracy score there. Presentation score roughly the same. So the final Kunze score comes in at 6.68. Our current standings. And next up, we will have Justin Sun from Eagle Tokyo. Okay. Jumbi. She. Ethan was a member of that gold medal Pan Am Games team in the freestyle team division. Also finished fourth in the recognized pair division at Pan Am Games. But Ethan, yeah, Ethan's been around a long time. He's always ah! in that top four, top eight at nationals, along with that top pack of athletes. It's very clean, and you can definitely oh. hear power through this video. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a lot of power sure. in that form. So, we'll see if that's reflected in the presentation score. And it looks like it. Total score for this first boom today is 7.77. Presentation score is 7.5. To me! She. Very fast first two moves there, showing that connection. Yeah, he's definitely taking an aggressive rhythm here. So we'll see some, depending on how the judges interpret that, that's uh, rewarded with good rhythm and connection or if they feel that it's rushed. So it really depends on the, how the judges feel about it. Some long stances there too, showing good strength. Judges interpret. Sure. Okay. Very clean, very strong, solid front kicks, have very nice stability. Like 
Pastor Chong said, more aggressive rhythm, and it looks like it was rewarded. His total score is higher at 7.80. Higher presentation score this round. He finishes with a 7.78. I think that puts him, yes, number one spot right now by 0.03. Right, yeah, that puts him uh, 0.03 ahead of his teammate. Next up, we have Jason Matsura from Aya Taekwondo. Coached by Master Zai Lor. Uh, Jason just earned his black belt in December 2018. So it's great to see him out there and competing. It's nice to see someone who perhaps started the sport at a little bit of a later age, being able to compete at this level. I think it's one of the great things about you know, our sport at this point, you know, we are still able to compete and provide these opportunities oh. for growth. So great to see him out there. And Jason's first boom to score comes in at 6.43. Jason also likes to trick, so we may see some freestyle poomsay coming out of him at some point and uh, enjoys basketball and ultimate frisbee with friends in his spare time. Sounds like good summertime activities. Ah! Trains out of Sacramento. You are seeing a little bit of extra motion there in his stance transitions, a little bit of heel lifting, so he's probably will see some accuracy hit there. But overall, very solid, nice power. I appreciate the volume of his hands. Ah! Sometimes with these, who say we uh, shortchange our volume, but it's nice to see him oh. reach and relax. Yep. Can you? And his Boomsday sword comes in at 6.53 that round. An average score of 6.48 overall. Yeah, we're going to see an interview with Neil McLaren, someone we've known for Next up, we have Kevin Liu, huh? also from CW Window Boston and coached by Master Dan Trong. Three. Certainly with a lot of the uh, collegiate sure. pipeline, we have a lot of uh, senior one athletes in the area, as you'll see on the video. Kevin was also on that World Cup team for under 30 recognized team earning a bronze medal. Yep, that team was with Andrew Hurd and Kevin Jang. I've been training with Kevin for quite a while now, so it's also been great seeing him develop um, his Pumse oh. for many years. Sure. And his first score comes in at 6.67. Accuracy at 2.83, presentation at 3.83. Kevin also enjoys snowboarding in his spare time. We are in, in the Northeast, so a lot of winter sports up here. It is quite interesting to see the difference in videos, I have to say, because I, I was in the room when he was recording this and his power was off the charts then, but it's a bit harder to tell in the video. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think we're also watching a feed over Zoom, so our frame rate might not be the same as, uh, as what we see uh, in person. But yeah, there is absolutely a difference in, in that, uh, since that, that perception of power, perception of volume. So 
It's another thing to keep in mind where we might push power oh. to the max in person. We might dial back on it a little bit for video to get those cleaner lines. And Kevin, second Kumse score comes in at 6.60. Roughly similar scores there. And he finishes with 6.63 overall. That puts him currently in eighth. Next up, we have George Chen from Team Champion in Flushing, coached by Michael Rowe. Chubi. George also competes, uh, represents NYU and the Eastern Collegiate Taekwondo Conference, which is a collegiate league that you competed in, Carissa, and that I, I did. <laughs> very fond memories of the league. Before, yeah. It's so actually fond that I'm still working <laughs> and volunteering my time with them because it's such mm -hmm. a great organization. Tournament committee co-chair for that event uh, you, you've been serving as for a few yeah. years. Also great to see George out here competing in this event. He's also a sparring athlete. Hello. Yeah, George Hello. also uh, compete, a very uh, accomplished spar uh, sparring competitor as well. And George's first Kumse comes at 6.77. George was the AAU uh, national team member and B, national B team member in uh, 2019 and 2020 for sparring, respectively. But a double threat here. I'm sure very uh, clean Pumse. definitely always great to see athletes competing in both. As you know, it's a little bit harder to, to spar right now. Um, so fantastic yeah. taking this opportunity to compete in this event. So continuing to train. Hello. Show. Ta-da. Kana. And George. Finishes with a 6.76 for his second Pumse. Very close scores there, 6.77 overall. And you can see the current standings there for first 10 athletes that have competed. Next up, we have Jiwon Jung, Jung's Young and Kondo, coached by Master Singup Jung. Jimbi. Shi Chak. I'm definitely one of the taller athletes. He's been uh, having a, a really good year, placing really well at a lot of different competitions. He was on the 2019 national team, so I did get to be on team with him last year where we competed oh. at President's Cup. It's great getting to know him a little bit more there. Sure. And Ji Wong's first score is at 7.63. Pretty high accuracy score there at 3.37. Chimbi. Shi Chak. Chak. Part of a Taekwondo family, sisters, father, all involved. All been high performers for quite a while. I believe we should be seeing his sister compete at this event too. Ah! 
and solid performance Hold to it very clean. Shut Shut up, can it? A little bit of a lower score there, 7.33, but still pretty strong overall. Looks like he took a little bit of an accuracy hit there. Finishing off with a 7.48. Yeah, you really saw a big uh, fall off there. It's interesting. They must have really uh, seen something in the second four, maybe consistent loss of balance or something like that in transition. First score is pretty high. It's the USA Taekwondo Summer of Pumse. We're out here enjoying it here in the lake. We're practicing our Pumse. Are you doing it? Don't forget to sign up. Cadets Junior's coming up. So you guys get your registration by July 27th. Because what? you know what? We're doing this all summer long. Ah! And next up, we have Ryan Burnett from Coe's Martial Arts, coached by Mr. Bronson Coe. Let me see a little bit of forward lean there maybe on some of those stances after the punch. So maybe a couple of accuracy hits there. Kicks are definitely within the target area, but could be maybe a little bit higher for this division. So you'll probably see a little bit of hit on presentation as well. But overall, very clean, very nice performance. And Ryan Burnett's take a six score comes in at 6.30. Nice. Master Co. of course, producing uh, many Pumse athletes over the years. I took uh, the Pumse International Referee Seminar back with him way back in 2011. He has a beautiful school out there. A little bit of a forward lean there on the slow eight count. Say that is a harder move than one would expect, needing to maintain your posture and stability while rotating your upper body. And I think uh, his first uh, front leg front kick was just a little bit below the target area. So do expect to see a deduction there as well. But very nicely done. And Ryan's second score comes in at 5.73. Looks like he might have taken a little bit of a hit there on the accuracy side. So his final Pumse score finishes at 6.02. And that's our first 12 athletes on the board. Next up, we have, next up, we have Brian Meager from World Champion Taekwondo Fairfield, coached by Master Gunsu Kim and Master Kwang Jin Ha. She took. So Brian coming off of just a fantastic performance out of a really difficult field at US Open where he placed uh, bronze and 18 to 30 male individual. I think that was uh, by far, I think his uh, most impressive uh, accomplishment to date but he's been around for a, quite a while. Uh, placed third in <gasps> at the Wuxi World Cup in China in junior team, and uh, first in team at the World Taekwondo International President's Cup. Um, that was a really, really tight race between uh, three teams that all scored within just a couple tenths of each other. So Hello. very impressive. Sure. Very nice performance. He's really improved a lot. And his first Kumsi score comes in at 7.60, pretty high there. And interesting to see the third judge, uh, a little bit of a minority opinion there. So this is one case where you really do see um, <laughs> the referee's impact there on the score. And yeah, even with that, he still had a 7.6. So sign of a very good performance, really nice base and stability here. Brian also uh, enjoys volunteering, teaching Taekwondo to a variety of ages and belts. 
Ed Belts, and uh, is the president of Build On, which is a, a organization that raises money to build schools in developing countries. Yeah, wow, that's just really nice, clean movement there. Very impressed with his uh, transitions. Shoulder lines are really, really clean. Definitely a solid performance. They've certainly leveled up over the years. And Brian's second Pumse score comes in even higher at 7.70. A presentation score bumped up by 0.1. And he finishes with a 7.65 overall. Yeah, well done. And that places him third in the pack. Next up, we will have Max McKenzie from USTC, coached by Master Ho Jung Park. She that. Beautiful school. I think we see a combination of people who had to record, who could record in dojongs and record it at home in different environments. is not far from the U.S. Taekwondo Center for Excellence in, Col in Colorado Springs. Yeah! U.S. Taekwondo Center, very well known, very well established set of schools out there. They had very nice, confident performance. Did yeah. see some extra movement there, so we will see some hits. Score. He had a very intentional look to everything, so it's great to see that. 6.03 for his first Kumse. Set it! Yeah, you'll see a little bit of that shoulder movement and transition, and a little bit of that rise and fall. Really, um, Interesting how the video flattens things out and uh, you know magnifies some movements while de-emphasizing others. So nice height on that front kick. strikes may be, may be just a little bit on the low side so some deductions there maybe at the end need to be to the chin line and max's second pumse score finishes out of 5.83 probably have some of those deductions there as just noted on that last bar and he finishes with a 5.93 overall Take a look at our standings. Still topping the list is Ethan Sun at 7.78, but not far behind it is Alex Lee with 7.75. And next we have Jason Dahlberg from Texas Forge Taekwondo, coached by AJ Munez. Nice. AJ, of course, his coach, uh, three-time world champion and freestyle Pumse. Also a very accomplished, recognized Pumse athlete as well. So I saw him compete at uh, our recent NCTA live online Pumse championships where he placed third. So very solid competitor. New front stance is just a little bit on the short side there. A little bit of extra movement on some of these transitions. A little wobble there at the end. So you'll probably see a slightly lower accuracy score on this one than, sure. than maybe what we saw in the past from him. An interesting aspect of Taeguk 6 is that moving back bar where you don't see where you are going. You see the 
very technically accurate to hit your mark there. And Jason finishes with a 7.17 for that take of six. Kunye. Junbi. Jason finished sixth in freestyle junior pairs at 2019 Nationals. Sijak. He also enjoys running in pair time. So great to see he's another double threat, both freestyle and recognized Kunse. little adjustment to the side there to hit his mark, but maybe just a little on the visible side. We'll see if the judges Tiger analyze him for that. Tiger's slightly long there as well, but overall still very solid, very high front kicks. Yeah, he has a good settle into each move. And during transition, his frame is very, is pretty good, but definitely some extra movement there. Chariot. Kunyang. And Jason's second Kunse comes in a bit lower at 6.83. With an overall score coming up at 7.0. Let's see where this lands Jason in the pack. As a reminder, this is the preliminary round. So half of the athletes will go on to the semifinal round. Yeah, that magic number is going to be 11. If you stay in the top 11, then I'm gonna get a chance to move on. And next up, we have Emil Javid from Apex Tigers Martial Arts, coached by Master Guido Kwong. So far looking pretty clean. Definitely pretty sharp. Lots of power there. Real, he placed uh, bronze at the World Taekwondo Pan America live Kumse test event that they did a few weeks ago. He's also uh, been active at the National Collegiate Taekwondo Championships where he placed uh, bronze in individual and silver in team in 2019. Seen him around for a while. Definitely has a high kicking caliber. Been uh, kind of knocking at the door. See how the scores come up. And I think he reflects that. 7.43 overall. Presentations were pretty high at 4.27. Let's see how he fares with Chigook 8. As a reminder, all athletes record their rounds in one take. So you can have a great take of six, and then if you have a 30 second break, you gotta go into that second Pumse. So at this point, a little bit tired, trying to get your heart rate down in between rounds. That's right, and there's definitely a, a cost function. It gets, the more you do your Pumse, the less uh, apt you are to give your most powerful performance. So you can't just necessarily do them over and over again, so. I appreciate all of the uh, lighting fixtures they put down here to light the basement up. That's great. Smart. The blurring in the camera down. Yeah. A lot of power here. Maybe just a little bit of tension in the upper body, uh, giving a little extra movement on some of the moves. But otherwise, very solid. And he finishes with an even higher score here at 7.53 for that second Pumse. Emil's overall Pumse score finishes at 7.48. Let's see where this lands him. Currently in fourth. Look at that tie between him and Ji Wang Jiang. When there are ties, the tiebreaker is a higher presentation score. Next up, we have Robert Miller from Master Kim's World Class Taekwondo, coached by Jung Kyo Kim.
we're definitely seeing some great performances overall. It's noted by the various ties we have in the top eight so far. That's a nice difference. I've not seen this competitor before. I think uh, definitely good power, good kicking caliber, a little bit of hunching at the top for some of his kicks, so a little bit of extra head motion, but some judges mind that, some judges don't. But overall, it's a, a very mature performance. So we'll see how it comes back, especially later in the draw like this. That was a very strong back bar, a lot of volume with those push blocks. And Robert's first swing say comes in at 7.17. Yep. Middle judge ding a little for accuracy there. Not sure what what she or he saw. She Looking very strong so far. Once again, it seems like a little bit more of an aggressive rhythm here. Really pushing that tempo. Nice transition there, that reverse. It's one of the trickier ones. Yeah, very, and pushing his front kicks tempo also. Yeah, nice whole body power here. But again, just a little bit of extra motion on the head. So we'll see. But the overall presentation should be high. So very, very nice job. All right, let's see how Robert does for his second round. And it's 7.10. Looks like a second jet or judge one seeing something maybe we're not quite seeing here. 7.13 overall. And that place is in currently 10th. Once again, so magic right number. On that cusp, right? Yeah. right on that cusp of, of uh, making that cut. He needs to make stay in the top 11. So we'll see how it turns out. Yeah. Next up, we have Jeremy Sa from CW Taekwondo of Boston, coached by Master Dan Truong. <laughs> <laughs> yep, a teammate of ours again. Jeremy's actually just graduated from the junior ranks, just graduating high school. He's headed to Columbia University in the fall. He enjoys reading and trying new foods. Jeremy is also an athlete that I've seen develop over the years. As you just heard, he just graduated from high school. I think I first met him when he was 10 years old. <laughs> So he was quite young and a lot shorter than me back then, but not anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's strange how kids do that. <laughs> and Jeremy's first score comes in at 7.2. And that third judge giving a little ding for accuracy there, maybe didn't like some of the top line motion from him. So far, pretty clean. Yeah, I like that stance. Jeremy also sparred during his junior days. Also another dual athlete here. Very nice. I think uh, clean, maybe just a little bit of rise and fall in some of the movements, but certainly nothing to, no major deductions there. Let's see where he finishes. A little bit higher on the second round with a 7.27. Looks like uh, two of the judges scored him lower, but one scored him significantly higher on the presentation. Followed across the board there. Jeremy finishes with a 7.23. That lands him currently in ninth. He's two above the cut. Mm -hmm. With four people left to go. Next up, we have Isaac Fenta, also from CW Taekwondo Boston, trained by Master Dan Chuang. 
you had a lot of athletes, coach. <laughs> like I said, we have that collegiate pipeline. And, you know, so, we all enjoy training, training and working together. Isaac is a graduate of MIT as well. He's an instructor with the club there. Still very involved in the collegiate world. Also a sparring athlete as well. Mm -hmm. Sensing a trend. <laughs> Computer <laughs> scientist as well. Very thoughtful. Young man always uh, thinking really hard about his technique and how we can make the students in the club better. Oh. Isaac is another athlete sure. we've seen develop over the years in terms of his, his Pumse. I think he started off sparring and then transitioned a little bit later into Pumse. Um, his first score comes in at 6.90. Yeah, and Isaac's really come a long way, so it's really nice to see that accuracy coming in so clean. He's really worked hard on that and worked hard on his flexibility to get his uh, kicks up. So um, great to see uh, that paying dividends with uh, much higher scores than he's had in years. I know Pumse, uh, would you say, Carissa, uh, flexibility is pretty important to Pumse in a lot of ways? It is, but it's not the only thing. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Flexibility is important, but strength is just as important. Indeed. And there's a lot of different types of flexibility too, right? Flexibility of the upper body, flexibility of your kicks, flexibility of the calves. So a lot of different areas for restrictions to creep their way into your form. So to achieve that effortless look, that's a lot of work. So really appreciate Isaac's progress in this regard and he's really come a long way. Very nice to see. And it's just his understanding of Pumse oh. has come a long way too. Indeed. Sure. We just have a few athletes left in this division. So Isaac's second Pumse comes in at 6.63. Yeah, they must have seen something in the accuracy. Maybe he hopped a little too far to just to get back to his mark. That's a common one and take it. Otherwise, I thought that was very clean, so. And there are current standings. And we've got three athletes left. Isaac finishes 14th. You can see there was a tie there with George Chen. Chen. Next up, we have William Shin from Kim's K Taekwondo, coached by Master Sung Jin Kim. So. I remember uh, seeing these guys, uh, one of the National Pumse team camps. I had not seen uh, Team K. Uh, before and I was really impressed with both their um, recognized skills as well as their freestyle skills. So Coach Kim doing great work with them. Very high kicks here. High kicking caliber. Really recently uh, out of the junior ranks as well, at age of 17. He's turning 18 this year. U.S. Open silver medalist and bronze medalist at President's Cup. And silver oh, and bronze. First medalist. round. The first score of 7.57. To me. William likes to play video games and play all sports. That's very broad as well as uh, skating. I don't know if that means, uh, I assume that means uh, skateboarding, but maybe not. Yeah, you know, sometimes when I see these junior athletes come up, it's an interesting, there is a transition in style from uh, junior to senior. And what I'm seeing here is, uh, you know, definitely this is a style that looks that kind of effortless kicking and really clean lines. It's a very junior style. I think senior one style may be a little bit more Powerful, a little bit more grounded, but this is still very high caliber Pumse. All right, let's see how his second Pumse scores. But it's always great to see our junior athletes enter into the senior division and then continuing their competition journey. And his second Pumse comes in at 7.63, a high presentation score there. Overall, finishing with 7.60. 
and William Shin is currently in fourth position. And we just have a couple athletes left and then we'll see who makes it oh, into the on. semifinal round. Next up is his teammate, Daniel Lee, also from Kim's K Taekwondo, coached by Sung Jin Kim. So Oh, that's really nice. Really nice height and power on those on these kicks. Really showing well on video. His upper body mobility is very good. Maybe a little bit of a forward lean there on those punches at the end of that bar. But kicking caliber, very high. Daniel placed uh, third at the Grand Slam, but it was a really a tight race, uh, three-way tight race for for that spot between uh, Alex Lee and Kevin Jung and him. So, really a rising star. He's also 18, just came out of the, just came out of juniors. And his first Kung State finishes with 7.80. Look at those presentation scores. <laughs> See a number of teams really taking that first line pretty fast. Mm. In this uh, this video so far. He enjoys drawing, gaming, tutoring, and of course teaching taekwondo. Uh, I really like his uh, upper body frame during his front kicks. It's very relaxed, even while he's delivering a lot of power. Very very good body isolation there and very consistent on his stances. So, yeah. Definitely you'll see him go deep in this competition if he can keep this level of performance up. All right, let's see how he fares. Two very strong performances. That first Kunse was a very high finish at 7.8. Let's see if he maintains that. Very close with a 7.70. His presentation score is definitely up there in the pack. And Daniel Lee finishes with a 7.75. That number is familiar. Let's see where he lands. Daniel is in third, just behind Alex Lee based off of that presentation score. Definitely seeing some very high caliber athletes here. Good. And Me. we'll be finishing this round with Ho Jun Park from she, US that. Taekwondo Center. And it looks like the same school out of, Colorado, out of Colorado Springs. I'm seeing a lot of extra motion, a lot of heel breaks on the transition. But again, very confident, determined performance like his teammates. A little bit of a side step there after that turning kick. Stances perhaps oh. just a, little a touch wide, although that's hard to tell from the camera angle. Yep. And Ho Jun's first Kumse finishes with a 7.07. I think that confidence is really shining through. To it. Helping with Me. the presentation scores. She duck. Looking down a little bit here, but nice frame. Overall, well, rhythm is pretty good. Yeah. But I do like the rhythm. I think a lot of good training showing here. seeing a little bit of the downward gaze here. All right. And that is our final Kumse in this under 30 male black belt division. And Ho Jun finishes with a 7.10 for that second round. 
with an overall score of 7.08. Let's take a look at the standings. That magic number is 11. Top 11 make it to the final round. Right, and then uh, of course, and those seedings will be erased in the next round. Everyone will start out at, at a random order, at least if they are. Congrats to our under 30 male division, the top 11 who made it to the semifinal round. Now let's see how the females do in their yeah. preliminary round. First up, we have Kelsey Ha from Team M Taekwondo, coached by coaches An Hui and Long Win. And this is a national team head coach for Pumse Dan Long. And I am Carissa Fu, current national team member. Kelsey's a long time figure in the Pumse world. We were first on a national team with her in 2013 in um, Bali, Indonesia, one of the more memorable trips. A really strong competitor. That was a very clean stop right before all the stuff on the side. Right, another uh, patio performance. Really appreciating, again, everyone doing whatever it takes to make these performances happen. Kelsey's a freestyle competitor as well, world medalist many times over in the pairs and team division. And as uh, in addition to always being one of the strongest uh, recognized competitors out there, well known for her flexibility. Absolutely. I'd always see her name in the division when I was competing in the under 30 division. <laughs> it's always great to see her out there. I feel like I competed against her for many, many oh. years. So it's good to see her still in this division. And that was Kelsey Ha with Shik Jin. Full score of 7.23. And you see a difference of opinions here too in the referees. And we've been seeing that. That's yeah. normal, I think, for that to happen. But it is a little surprising sometimes when you mm -hmm. see those big divides. I didn't see anything. Um, certainly, I thought the accuracy was very good on that Pumse. Shichak. Not sure I see where the lower accuracy was coming from. And now she's doing Taeguk 7. So for the females, their first form is Shik Jin. Second form is Taeguk 7. Maybe she has just a slightly downward gaze. A couple of these moves. Oh, just narrowly missed the uh, <laughs> the tarp there. Hello. Overall, be solid. Really good. Maybe perhaps just a touch less stable than that first Pumse, but really, really good. And second Pumse, seven point two three. It is always tough to go first in the division. That most Kumse competitors consider that a, a difficult position to start in because the referees tend to set a benchmark and work from there. At least that's the feeling. So we'll see how that score holds up over the course of the division. Next up, we have AJ Munoz from Texas Forge Taekwondo, coached by her father, Joe Munoz. AJ, of course, three-time world Pumse champion and freestyle individual, making her, I believe, uh, one of the most decorated, if not the most decorated athlete in Pumse. She was also the recognized U.S. national team member in 2018 in, in uh, Taipei. Her 2014 performance at the world championships was definitely one to remember. It was her first world championships and she performed with some broken bones and still won gold. <laughs> Definitely a formidable athlete in many respects. Right. And I think one of the things I appreciate is that as someone who has a slightly different body type than a lot of the people in Recognized Pumse, that she has found her own style that that really suits her sensibilities and her philosophy and movement. And it and I do appreciate that she's been able to be successful with that. Definitely uh, puts a lot of thought and a lot of training into everything she does. 
Very solid execution of Shipjin. Very stable. Right, I think that's one of her hallmarks in both her recognize and freestyle Pumse is her stability. A lot of core strength there. And she scores 7.56. Pretty consistent on the judges. So, yep. Jimmy. AJ was also um, World University Games gold medalist, the first Pumse athlete to earned that distinction from the U.S. at the 2019 World University Games in Naples, Italy. I was fortunate to see that in person as the head of team of that U.S. delegation for Taekwondo. Yeah, that is just a super clean stop on some of these moves. And for those competitions, it's a combination of traditional and freestyle, correct? Correct. That's almost a division that is uh, uh, tailor-made for her strengths, for sure. But still had to battle for it to the very end. Definitely one of a kind athlete here. And very solid score, 7.77. And AJ finishes with a final Pumsey score of 7.67. Currently placing our first. Next up, we have Christy Beep. Park from Tech One Kids, coached by Bo Hyung Kim. Stop. Coach Kim is a 2007 World Pumse Champion, one of the early eras of. Uh, Pumse, the first World Pumse Championships being in 2006. Ah! It's a really very different style, maybe from what the you saw in the last, but also equally valid style. A lot more, I would say, um, relaxation and transition. Ah! A lot more smooth style, but with still some good hand speed thrown in here and there. So it's a, we'll see how this reflects. Perhaps not as with that incredibly clean stop that AJ had, but still a very, very nice presentation, very nice flow. Definitely seeing that softness in the chambers before she executes quickly. Yeah, I would, I would call this a very Asian style, very Korean style. Of course, all these slow movements have their required time allotment, five seconds for those rock pushing movements. It was a very quick transition between that last front kick into the back fist. Pretty aggressive there. Slightly different rhythm, but it's very interesting to see. Let's see how our score. Finishes, so she finishes with 7.27. Right, so perhaps they, the, the power on the finish not quite as high as the last competitor, but accuracy was very good. Very clean first bar. Definitely still seeing the soft chambers into a quick execution here, maintaining that style. Ah! Yeah, I like her footwork a lot. It's very, uh, very efficient. Ta-da! There is an ease okay. about motion. It was very pleasant to watch. I agree. Ta-da! 
and it's reflected with a higher score, 7.50. Christy finishes the round with a 7.39. That places her second behind AJ. Next up, we have Valerie Long from Co Martial Arts, coached by Master Bronson Co. So far, hands are pretty clean. All right, Shipchin has a lot of these uh, same stances over and over again. So if the judges don't like something about one of the stances, it can be a little tough. But she's had pretty clean transition so far. Can't tell if it's the camera angle or, or distortion, but it looks like her sitting horse stances might be a little bit on the narrow side, but again, not 100% sure. I agree. It's Hard to tell. Looks a little bit high, but could just be our angle. That's a little slower rhythm than most people take on that sequence. Very nice though, very clean. Agreed. Clean, slightly slower rhythm on that back bar, but overall clean. Her score is 6.96. Little bit of a forward lean on her front kicks, but overall still very clean performance, nothing to really pick. Yeah, I think she does a really good job of going A to B without any extraneous motion in her shoulders. I do feel that she could involve her body just a little bit more on her techniques, but definitely a lot of work to get to this point. You can see it doing very nicely done. And after Valerie, we will have Camille McLaren. Before she goes, we're going to hear a little bit more about Camille's journey. So Valerie finishes her round with a 6.0, 8 .0, sorry, 6.80. Final score is 6.88. Um, my name is Camille McLaren. I'm from New York City. I've been competing since I was six years old, so about 16 years now. Um, and I'm in the under 30 senior one division. They said you were diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Would you want to maybe explain what Crohn's disease is? So Crohn's disease is a autoimmune disease. Um, it is hereditary, it mainly affects the small intestine um, and it can cause a lot of uh, pain as well. Um, so I was diagnosed when I was 12 years old and um, the main symptoms that I experienced uh, for the most part were uh, trouble like eating and loss of appetite uh, so for a long time I was always uh, very underweight um, and it affected me a lot as a competitor uh, but in more recent years um, I had to stop doing Taekwondo due to Crohn's disease um, I started having very very severe debilitating abdominal pain uh, and this led to emergency emergency surgery uh, which then had complications. So it took me a while to heal and get back into it. Um, and, and that's, 
So it's been, I took about two and a half years off from Taekwondo from because of that. Uh, and it, I've been back doing Taekwondo for about a year and a half now. When was the last time that you competed? And then before you got diagnosed and had to take a break? And then when was the first time you started competing again after you got better? So this is my first competition in about three or four years. What was it like with having to take the time off? Like, how did you stay, how did you keep yourself motivated, you know, knowing you wanted to get back into Taekwondo and competing? Well, I, I love Taekwondo. Um, I fell in love with it when I was five years old. And uh, I fell in love with competing when I was six years old. And so it's always been, I've always been motivated to continue to do that throughout my, my entire life. What was that? What was that feeling like when you were able to get back into the gym and get back into training and competing and teaching uh, at your uh, studio again? So it was a a big sigh of relief. I, I really missed moving around and uh, you know, doing kumse and teaching, and um, so it, it felt really good to be able to do that again after so long. And here we see Camille back at competition. Camille is from New York. Right. And, we, and we've, we've known uh, Camille a long time, right, Carissa? We have uh, yeah. seen her at many events around the Northeast, uh, Coach uh, Turgeon's uh, camps and events, Pumse events. And uh, she's always been a strong competitor, super flexible. And uh, yeah, and uh, you know, you never, it just goes to show you never know uh, what people have gone through to get to the point where they are at to be able to compete and how much it is a blessing to be able to just be on the mat and, uh, and competing as an athlete in the sport that we Absolutely, definitely seen her around. Um, so it's great to see her back. Yeah, Crohn's disease is uh, certainly, having had friends uh, with uh, uh, similar autoimmune diseases, you know, it's one of those things that no one really knows what you're, the pain you're feeling, but uh, it's just really, really tough. So tremendous respect to her. She's looking really good here too. Um, really, really nice length of stances, nice flexibility, as I mentioned. Definitely an ease about her motion. She just seems very flexible, all parts, kicking, upper body. That's right. And I appreciate how she's uh, arranged the mats exactly to fit Shipjin. So <laughs> that's uh, also some nice foresight there. Good planning. And our first round comes to 6.70. What a variation there in our presentation. Definitely still maintained that flexibility through the years. Very high front kicks on that top bar. For sure. Looks like the judges gave her kind of in the 1.2s to 1.3s range for presentation. So the only reason her score is not higher maybe is just a little bit of power. But certainly, uh, just given everything she's been through, she's really looking fantastic. Pleasure to watch. Very strong finish on that last bar. Indeed. And finished on her mark. <laughs> nice clear yellow mats there to see. Right, I like the color coding there. And her score finishes at 6.97 for Tizuk 7. Yeah, and then you did see those uh, presentation scores come up to the 1.3, 1.4 range. So if you're right about that last line, really showing well there. And here are current standings. Neil finishes fifth for now. 
Next up is Christina Castillo from World Trickle Middle Center, coached by Master Elva Adams. We had the pleasure of uh, working with Christina. Uh, I had the pleasure of working through Christina at the 2019 President's Cup, where she represented Team USA in the female individual division. Uh, she has won the 2019 NCTA uh, championships in female individual. She's also awesome. been on the uh, uh, the World Cup team for. Uh, Team USA at the World Cup in 2019, where she represented and got a silver medal, uh, represented at the Wuxi uh, World Championship, World Cup Championship. Definitely a lot of competitions she's attended. <laughs> she is an athlete that we've seen for many years. I remember her in the junior division. Now she's been in the senior division for a little bit. So, very seasoned competitor. Oh. Yeah, one thing I appreciate about it, Christina's Kumse is how her Jump. her uh, she's so light on the floor, always moves it with a lot of ease. Kumse finishes at seven point two seven. Your stances might be a little long, but her front kicks definitely very high and clean. Good kicking caliber there. Coached by Elva Adams in Texas. Very accomplished Pumse competitor and sparring competitor herself and Olympic referee. So definitely a large base of knowledge to draw from there. Love her uh, stance transitions always seem uh, so easy. She really moves from point A to point B uh, a lot of ease, but a little bit of uh, maybe looseness in the shoulders that may affect her presentation a little bit. I can say you got 7.17. A little bit of a hit from that second judge there on her accuracy. 7.22 is her overall score. That places her fourth. Just 0 0.01 behind Kelsey and Aha. Next up, we have Leah Rosenswag from CW Tech Window at Boston, coached by Master Dan Trong. Leah is another competitor that's somewhat newer to competition, another graduate of Northeastern. This is also one of her first few competitions back from an injury as well. So it's great to see her back on the mat. She had a torn Achilles, so it's really great to see her recover from that. It's one of those really, really difficult injuries. She competed in the Eastern Collegiate Taekwondo Conference as well, so it's great to see her transitioning to national competition. She's been to nationals a few times. She just competed at the Upper Midwest Open Virtual Pumse Tournament, placed uh, first in that tournament. She enjoys reading, singing, and playing ukulele, which I actually did not know about her. I also did not know. <laughs> Fun facts. When Leo was injured and in her boot, she was still showing up to training a very dedicated and motivated athlete. Right, nothing like seeing someone do sidekicks in a boot to make you inspired. Mm -hmm. And Leah's first move comes at 6.43. Definitely saw just a little bit of a uh, wobbliness that I don't always see from her. So on this particular recording, on this day, we weren't able to be in that same space as, as her. So it's actually the first time I'm really watching this performance. It's 
And with her injury with her Achilles heel, she's still doing PT. She's trying to strengthen that up. As we all know, PMC requires a lot of strength in that leg, in your legs for you know, graceful, effortless looking transitions. That's right. Leah's uh, going on to study up, get a master's degree in sports psychology. She was inspired by her experience working through her own injury. So that's pretty neat. Looking forward to hearing what she learns. And her second Pumse finishes with 6.44. Like pretty consistent scoring across the judges. And overall, 6.44. So only 50% uh, of the competitors are going to move on. Watching Kathleen Lynch from Westside Taekwondo, coached by Hillary Monaco. Also, an alumnus of, uh, I believe, of Boston University, competed in the Eastern Collegiate Taekwondo Conference. You were more as a sparring competitor. Then, great to see you're taking up Pumse. And Kathleen's first score is 5.10. We'll see if there's space here. Oh, just enough. That's great. And appreciate how all of us have really had to maximize the spaces that we're in. Absolutely. We have to be very creative. <laughs> in order to fit in our Pumse. This, this time has definitely forced some, you know, imaginary or more creative uh, training for all of us. A little bit of accuracy scores here and there or deductions here and there with her wrists and alignment. Right. But it's great to see. I know that she's competed in a number of competitions during this virtual time, I've seen her name in a lot of draws. So a great time to get out there and you know get that competition experience you need for the future so really appreciate seeing her putting herself out there i know her coach uh, hillary working with her to get her up to speed so it's great stuff and our second from say is 5.00 finishing with a 5.05 And interesting with all these recordings we've been needing to do, thinking, what can I fix for the next recording? <laughs> next up, we have Tony Cozart from Roman Martial Arts, coached by Master Rick Bradley. Seen her around many times as well. I believe she represented uh, Team USA at a past President's Cup in female team, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. In either 2017 or 2018. It would have been 17, I believe. Yeah. 17. Looks like mm -hmm. she's really improved her solidity and relaxation since that time. I really like how close she is to the ground. Now she's not rushing anything. A little bit of shrugging maybe on those front kicks. Mm -hmm. But overall, very intentional. Everything is very clean, done with 
the clarity. Agree. Bro. Show. All right, first score is 6.67. Pretty consistent across the board from the judges. Looks like judges were looking for just a little bit more power on some of the, and speed on some of the techniques. 1.2 to 1.3 range. I am seeing a little more power on this form, perhaps, but also maybe a few other technical things as well. So we'll see how it balances out. Tig X7 is a very interesting form. You have to develop a lot of volume and power with such tiny stances. That's right. Really requires a really strong, strong core, strong stomach, abdomen, and back but without losing your frame or relaxation. Bro. I would think her score would be a little higher this Hang round, on. but we shall see. <laughs> 6.57. For our second meeting. Finishing off with a 6.62. And this division has 31 competitors. So our magic number to make the cut to the semifinals is 16. Next up, we have Renee Zhao, also from CW Taekwondo Boston, co coached by Master Dan Chong. Renee is another athlete who has competed through the collegiate pipeline. Also a graduate from MIT. That's right. She was club president and captain during her time there. Really showed herself to be an outstanding administrator, standing athlete, whom say inspiring, really determined athlete who was not afraid to go after what she wanted. She was a member of the 2019 U.S. National Pumse team, representing at the President's Cup. With me <laughs> and teammate Miyako Yarek. <laughs> so Did great you know that she team. enjoys making boba? Does she? Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like most fun facts we hear people like drinking boba, but she loves making boba. Overall, very clean. Oh. Very clean. She chose a faster pace. She's one of the taller competitors. So we'll see how this translates. Our spoon is 6.93. Very nice. Looks like they rewarded the accuracy, maybe just slightly on the lower side, but overall, no major mistakes. Very high front kicks from Renee. Renee is also another athlete who has come back from injury stronger. And she will be going to medical school next year. So. That's right. She'll be attending UCLA. Difficult to start a fall oh. semester during these quarantine times for sure. But uh, I know that if anyone can make it work, she can. Very consistent. Another 6.93. Let's see where 6.93 lands Renee in the final standing. The current standing position. Once again, that magic number is 16. Next up, we have Aaron Klingerman from Coe's Martial Arts Academy, coached by Master Soon Ko. Like the backyard setting. Pretty 
appreciate that so many of Team Co's uh, competitors came out for this event. Like missing the small hinge position with the flat kick, though. So she'll probably take a little hit on accuracy there. Great use of space. <laughs> yeah. I like the grass. And Aaron's first score is 5.93. Yeah, it looks like that middle judge uh, penalized the, the hand position. Yeah, I like her body turn on that push block and back fist motion. After Aaron, we're going to have an interview with Coach Poos and Karen Rial, who will be our next competitor up. Let's see where Aaron falls. Higher score at 6.37. Final score at 6.15. And our magic number is actually eight. Since the first flight on the... Here we are at the USA Taekwondo Summer of Poomsae, and I'm with Pan American Games gold medalist, Karen Rial. Karen, thanks so much for spending some time and joining us this evening. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, it's so good to see you. We haven't seen each other competitions in a while, so it's great to see you here live, uh, at least on screen. Um, first, I want to ask you about the intro, because you're in the intro for the Summer of Poomsae, so with some really, really technical Pumse. So how's it feel being one of the stars or one of the, the highlighted athletes for the summer of Pumse? Uh, it's pretty cool. Also a little weird to see myself. Um, <laughs> and it's pretty interesting to see a look back on last year when we still had in-person competitions. Yeah, I know you're right. And, and, and a big difference, a big pivot, if you will, from coming from, for example, a Pan American Games where you were in Lima, Peru, Giant Stadium, tons of tons of a raucous crowd really rowdy crowd cheering you guys on or even against you at times if they're cheering for another country um to this completely different virtual format where you're doing it probably maybe quietly in your house or in your dojang or or your training area how did you prepare for this completely different environment of a virtual summer pumse competition well, definitely competing in a stadium with a large audience, that in itself has a lot of pressure to it. You know, a lot of people are watching you, especially at the Pan Am Games. You know, we were also on TV the whole time. So that was definitely a different kind of pressure. And I think now that we've transitioned to an online format where there's no audience, it's just you and whoever's manning the camera. Right. Uh, you kind of have to get yourself into that competition mentality. I think that's something a lot of a lot of us aren't quite used to yet sure. uh, trying to get into that competition mentality in the place that we usually have our training mentality. Um, to prepare for this event, our team, we just had a lot of Zoom trainings. We had mm -hmm. classes over Zoom. I think that was definitely a big challenge getting used to training on our own or just training on Zoom. It's definitely a lot more challenging and it's definitely, um, it definitely put a lot of pressure on us in a good way to really have our own kind of self-discipline while we're training, right. not being in the same area as your coach. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, your, your coach isn't with you, so you're having to do it, like you said, on Zoom or virtually. And so it's virtual practice for a virtual competition. So it's, it's definitely, like you said, a major transition. And, and you as an elite athlete, it sounds like you've handled it perfectly. So I'm sure you'll have great success in this summer of Pumse. 
uh, competition coming up. But, but we also have another question for you about this up and coming pathways to the national team. It's a new format for Pumse athletes, as well as a national ranking system for Pumse athletes, where you can see your name up at the number one ranked athlete in the country. And then of course, work your way through the path to ultimately be the national team member to compete for Team USA. Um, once you've seen that now, um, kind of how do you feel about it? What's, what's your thoughts on the, uh, the pathways and that ranking system in particular? I think the pathways and the ranking system, they're definitely, um, I think they're a great opportunity for everyone to really put their best foot forward in trying to get a spot on the national team. I think this new selection system really gives everyone a great opportunity to show their skills not just one time in one event but on multiple occasions and if you don't do well in one competition you still have the opportunity to prove yourself again after that and still have the chance to meet the national team yeah that's a great point one one really poor competition doesn't end your year um you can come back and have a lot of ton of success in other competitions and ultimately get yourself back to that one ranking in uh, that national team spot. So that's really a great point. Well, we want to say th uh, good luck at the USA Taekwondo Summer of Pumse. We look forward to seeing you in person sooner than later so we can do some of the interviews with one of our most elite athletes here at USA Taekwondo. It is Karen Real, the Pan American Games gold medalist from Lima, Peru also a national team member. So Karen, thank you so much for spending a little time with us on Chopping It Up, Summer of Pumse Edition. Thank you for having me. And now we get to see Karen from Eagle Taekwondo, coached by Master hey. Jung Hong Jin. Karen also attends uh, MIT, trains with our team during the year as well, but coached by Grandmaster Jin. And it's been working out there intensively with him. I know he's really happy to have her uh, there uh, after the, everyone got sent home. Really clean style here. I think uh, one of the things you look at, Karen, like uh, similar comments to uh, Alex is her effortlessness and her transitions and her cleanliness of movement. Very uh, dancer-like. She paints very clean pictures, very solid finishes with her stance and her upper body frame. Very effortless. Right, just really good upper and lower body mobility in general. Manages to uh, create power without making it look effortful. Uh, Karen is a world bronze medalist uh, from 2018, the last world championships in Taipei. And uh, it was a really big lift for the team. She actually uh, defeated Korea in the head-to-head -head competition in the quarter <laughs> spot, in that spot. So that was uh, something that's very, very difficult to do, um, given that Korea is one of the powerhouses, or if not the powerhouse in Pum State. And let's see how Karen finishes with her first Pum State. 7.60. Wow, 3.5 accuracy from Judge Warren. Judge Warren. Ready? Me. She jumped. Another interesting fact about Karen is that she also spars. I definitely love seeing athletes who do both. Right. I believe she was national B team member years back, but is ex focusing exclusively now on Pumse. National Junior B team, sparring number nine. Very nice finish, very clean. I think she's really improved her power actually over the past uh, year, so that's been nice to see. And we've talked about that, the junior to senior division is a little bit different in development of power 
and it shows in your second Tuesday, 7.70. It's so interesting that uh, I think the dominant mode on that score was the accuracy. Was, uh, extremely high. Well, very tight between number one, AJ, at 7.7, and Karen with 7.65. Next up, we have Angela Tortora from Team M Taekwondo, coached by An Win. She was the World Cup. 2019 World Cup Pumse bronze medalist. Team, 18 to 30, I believe. Enjoys hanging out with friends and family and baking in her free time. We also saw her brother compete earlier today. A uh, little Taekwondo siblings. Really, really strong core, really braced core throughout the Pumse. Very solid very performance. Yeah, very strong. Sure. See, we see some childhood photos in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> and our score is 7.13. Very high kicking caliber. Has a pretty effortless look to that front kick. That's yeah, really, really. Clean shoulders, clean lines, good stances. Very com compact movements. And let's see our second thing say. Winds up. Slightly lower on this round, 7.0. Finishing off with a 7.07. Once again, this is the first flight of the preliminary division for the under 30 female, so the magic number is top eight. We'll move on to the semi-final round. Next athlete up is Carolina Solis from Team M CPP, coached by Masters An Hui and Long Win. Loving the use of space. You gotta do what you gotta do if you wanna compete. Actually a nice, very dramatic uh, location. Chipchin and Tigup 7 are pretty different forms with Chipchin really needing to show that stability or groundedness. Um, 7 is a little bit more rhythm to it. It's good to see the diversity here. She placed uh, first at the 2018 Guangzhou Open International Taekwondo Championships and first at the 2018 Chosun University Presidential International Pumse Taekwondo Championship. So it sounds like she has some good international experience in Korea. 
She enjoys cooking, gardening, and spending time with friends, and eating tacos. See how that performance lands. And she finishes with a 6.80. Like a little bit of a spread on the accuracy. Some differences of opinion there. And uh, she hails from Mexico, actually, although she currently resides in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Once again, take of seven. Maybe just a little bit of looseness looking. in the top line there, yeah, on her <laughs> shoulders. Good I do like her relaxation. Top bar. <laughs> Sorry, I keep talking over you there. <laughs> We're seeing pretty similar things right now. <laughs> We have a couple athletes left in this division. Let's see if Carolina finishes in the standings. Solid performance with a 6.76. And our final point is for is 6.78. I currently places for 10. Two spots below the magic number needed. And our next athlete is Elizabeth Zoe from CW Taekwondo at Boston, also coached by Master Dan Trong. So Elizabeth is uh, just finishing her second year at MIT. <laughs> Living in Texas during these quarantine times with her parents. So Filming at Master, <laughs> Master Un Lee School, who is himself a national team member and her original instructor. So thank you very much for welcoming her back to record and training with us on Zoom. So far, very clean. Elizabeth is extremely flexible. Nice and clean. We'll see if the judges see her power or if they feel that she could have a little bit more, see how her presentation marks come back. 6.80. So it looks like they were just looking for a little more cleanliness of motion. Right. Once again, these recordings are done in one go. So <laughs> gotta be confident in your performance. No adapting, <laughs> unlike in-person competitions. It's just showing that flexibility, very high from kicks. Just staying in frame there. Appreciate that. Elizabeth actually just earned her black belt while come, before coming to MIT. Had only been doing Taekwondo for two years. Hello. One of a very, very determined competitor competing Good. in the Eastern region, Taekwondo Good. Conference. One of the all stars of that league. Finishing with a 6.83 for the second round. Uh, something. Most lower accuracy score there. And her overall score is a 6.82. Wow. Placing in 10th. 
We've got one more competitor left. Ariana Lee from Team M. Yeah. Coach by Masters An Hui and Long Lin. Shut. You see the garage dojong. A hallmark of two months, which was in fact started in a garage, so keeping true to the roots. Very clean stops here. Ariana has been competing for many years, a very accomplished freestyle athlete. Been on national team many times, will freestyle from today. Uh, very strong, recognized per se as well. Very clean, sounded strong. And their first round finishes at 7.17. Very consistent for accuracy and presentation score. Packing as we used to. Really muscular style. I don't see any excessive head movement or anything like that. And that was our last competitor for this. Oh, yeah. You see that scores come up. I thought that was a very, very strong and attacking form. So that's great to see. Ariana finishes with a 7.26 overall. Our top eight make it to the semi-final round. Congratulations to these who made it to the top eight. Man, that's some great action. Jason, Jason, I love it, man. I'm so impressed by these guys' composure. Um, and you can see in their individual videos how seriously they still take this. That Absolutely. just because it's gone virtually doesn't mean that it's been diminished. Oh, uh, man, it is, it is awesome. It is awesome. Yeah, flawless well, technique. Flawless techniques I see there, Sean. Oh, absolutely. I'm so impressed, I'm so impressed with their ability to, to, to get in there, get in their dojings, get in their houses, get in their basements, and – and compete and just literally compete for that ultimate prize. So very, very impressed with our athletes at this point. Yeah, I like the Pumse anywhere kind of mindset. They'll do it anywhere. Um, and so we have uh, some of our male black belt under 30 competitors who are moving on up to the semifinals. Let me run that list down to you right quick. Jeremy Su, Justin Chen, Kevin Jang, Casey Liu, Ji Wong Jong, Amil Dravid, William Shin, Brian Meager, Daniel Lee, Alex Lee, and Ethan Sun are advancing to the semifinals. Congratulations, yes. gentlemen. Very impressive, very impressive. Yes. On the other side, we actually have uh, several more athletes to compete in the female under 30. So there's 15 more athletes going to compete in the prelims. But you know what? We're not going to let you see those guys. We're not going to let you see those athletes yet because why? Because we want you to tune in to episode number two so you can watch the second half of the prelims of the under 30 female black belt competition 
there are 15 more, as I said. So yep. we're going to keep you on the edge of your seat. Once they compete, guess what? We'll give you the athletes that have moved up, moving on up to the semifinals in the women's under 30 female black belt competition. All right. So listen, Jason, this has been a blast. I guess I'll see you in episode two. I'm looking forward to seeing you in episode two. You got to be there. I got to be there. We're so happy that you're here with us. This has been USA Taekwondo's presentation of the summer of Summer Pumse. of Pumse. We've been chopping it up with Jason and Sherman, so don't go anywhere. We're going to come with another episode, so we're going to be there. You be there, too. Look at that Pumse, Jay. Oh, it's world class. It's world, world class. World class. class. <laughs> Sky.